What is up everyone? Today I wanted to talk about three big things that you should not do when you're keeping an enemies. I'll give you little suggestions, how you can do little shortcuts and what will help you if you want to do anything they want to do. It kind of doesn't make sense right now, but it will as soon as I start talking about them. So I tell everyone, and I think I mentioned this in some of my videos, don't do these three things and you'll be successful in keeping enemies. And enemies are very easy to keep, very easy. This tank compared to the any of the LPS, SPS tank will be way, way, way different. I treat this tank as a freshwater tank, as one of the easy freshwater tanks. This is even easier than a freshwater tank in my opinion. Just don't do these three things. Enjoy the hobby, enjoy your enemies. And enemies are kind of what got me into the hobby. This yellow tank as well, it's one of my favorite fish as well. So there you go, I'm talking about fishes now. So I'm here to talk about three big things for you guys not to do, so here we go. First thing is don't mess with your lighting. It's gonna be arguments here. Some people will say, hey, what, an enemy has a foot, so it doesn't matter what you do with your lighting. It's gonna move, it's gonna stay whatever it likes. Sure, but uh, not sure in my opinion. How I know this? Ask me how I know, because I tried. Learn my mistakes, set up your lighting, Set it up pretty high if you ask me an enemy's like highlighting and leave it alone. If you decide to move it in the future, I suggest not to, but if you decide to do it, do it very, very slow. I had the sliding at I believe in 80% when I started, now it's a 90. And I basically moved it two or three percent once a month. I know some people will call me crazy, but if you want to keep your enemies alive, because we don't really know where's that boundary when you're moving the lighting. Nobody can tell you, hey, you can move your lighting 10, 20%, it'll be fine. Nobody knows that, that number. Just move it slow and you'll be fine. Because the enemies are already used to your current lighting if you decide to change. So don't worry about it. You're basically setting them up for a better future. At least what you think is a better future. But the best for them is stability so keep that lighting stable as i suggested the best will be to set it up and don't touch it anymore that's one of the biggest things that you shouldn't be doing don't mess with your lighting right second thing is try not to get dinos dinos can wipe your enemies really quickly really quickly days i wouldn't go more than a week or two weeks with dinos and an enemies ask me how you know I had dinos. As soon as I got them, I ordered UV, and, and the day I installed the UV, an element is puffed up. It was a big deal. I figure I'll tell you guys how an enemies look like when they're not happy. Stick around in the end of this video, I'll tell you a little bit more about it. So yeah, keep away from heavy dinos. Usually people tell you keep those nutrients a little bit higher, don't have as much high lighting, and that's how you're gonna keep them away. The dinos that I had, only thing that I did is install the UV and they were gone. I still have a little bit of haze on my sand bed, but that's about it. And enemies don't care about that haze, but they did care about dinos. So yeah, keep those dinos away. Let's talk about actually third thing, and that's uh, mixing NEMS. I know plenty of people tell you, oh, bro, I have five different NEMS in my tank, it's fine to mix, and they suggest people to mix NEMS. I just don't think that's a bulletproof advice. Think better advice is pick the best, the enemy that you like the most and just put it in and don't add no enemies in the tank. That'll be the best advice for beginners. Now, if you've been in the, this hobby for a while, you'll know that some of the rainbows are fine mixing. Again, when you're a beginner, you don't really know what's a rainbow, what's not a rainbow. Uh, there's so many different types. If you maybe wanna go with some of those rainbow-like looking NEMs, get it from the source, from the tank that's mixing already and do everything he's doing. It can be set up for success. I'll tell you not to do it. I'll tell you, especially if you're gonna drop a lot of money if buying an enemy, if you're gonna buy Colorados, or if you're gonna buy Chicago's, or any other NEMs out there, 
I suggest just keeping one kind in one system. I've seen other people work around that. Again, bigger. The two things I think help with mixing lamps, especially higher ends, is UV. If you have oversized UV on your system, that might work. Again, might. Nobody has a paper on this, how big a UV, how big of a system, so you can mix these two types of lamps. Everything you do, you're gonna do it, it's gonna be up to you. If you wanna try, I will suggest for you to have a quarantine system ready. Look up Cypro. It's, uh, it's a little treatment that you can save an enemy from being mixed. And usually an enemies don't need that treatment at all if you're not mixing. So that's why I tell everyone, don't mix it. But if you want to do it, you need to do some research. You have to have quarantine on tank, tank on the side with Cypro medicine and or Cipro, whatever you call it. It's basically like bacterial medicine for fish and you can use it. You can look it up online. There's a recipe for it. You can have that on the side and you can have oversized UV and big system. The bigger the system, the bigger the volume, the less they'll fight. And how I know, I've seen that. I've seen that with my, some of my friends' tanks. I've tried some of the stuff. For right now, I don't have no proof that I can tell you, but I can tell you just from my experience that those two things will work the best. Again, the bigger the volume, they'll be better. And the bigger the UV you have in the system, they'll do better. Again, bulletproof advice is pick one and enjoy it because you'll never have to deal with none of that. You won't have to do cyber treatment. You won't have to do nothing about it. You won't have to worry about it at all. Again, an enemies are very easy to keep, very easy. Just you have to do it right, and then there's no worries. Worries are out. You don't have to do any research or nothing, okay? I know it's hard for you to set up a quarantine tank or have medicine on hand and even people that have lots of fish and keep big system full of fish they don't have quarantines so i assume that if, when you decide to buy an enemy that you won't have a quarantine that's what i tell you just pick one that you very like like the best and uh, just go for it anything else that i want to say in this video uh yes what i want to say how an enemy looks like when it's pissed off and it has that bacterial infection but when when you're mixing a few anemones how the bad one looks like what are the first signs so you know what to do one of the first sign that i notice when an enemy is going downhill is that she won't accept food the tentacles are not as sticky as health an enemy is health an enemy basically when you give it give it food it'll eat that food in two minutes will be gone the an enemy is going downhill you can put food on top of it and food will just slide off of it basically uh, that's one of the first things you want to you want to keep in mind and of course you have to feed an enemy so you know that if you don't feed your enemy often you won't even notice that feed your nems keep an eye on them if you're mixing or you have dinos and that's going to be one of the first things to notice when you feed it food will just slide off or it'll take a while for it to to grab that food eat it sometimes i've seen an enemy going downhill they'll need like 20 half an hour 20 minutes half an hour to digest that food and that's one of the first signs and an enemy usually eats way faster second sign is that tentacles are not as puffy they're not as full of water they're like more thinner and they'll start to shrink. So basically, you'll end up, when you see sick an enemy, you'll see basically very tiny tentacles, and you see them, they're very tiny in size, and they're very inflated, and they'll lose a lot of color. If you get an enemy that's like Sunburst an enemy that looks very nice, you're gonna, you're gonna have one pale looking an enemy that's strength that doesn't look like an enemy anymore. It looks like more like, like a little mushroom, it looks like soft coral almost, it looks pale. As I said, some of you guys will take this video as negative. Don't do these three things. Don't have dinos, don't mess with your lighting and don't mix on enemies. Again, there's work around everything like it is in life, but this is bulletproof device that you'll never have to worry about it again. This is a very easy tank to take care of. That's what I want you guys to have. A very easy experience with keeping refish and enemies. All right. If you guys have 
any questions, just drop them below. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I go um, by name Reef Under the Roof. Subscribe, like this video. All right, see you guys. Bye.